there be light. Ta-da! And welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, it's an interesting one today. Today we're talking about lighting, but it's not in the traditional sense that you might be thinking in these types of videos. We won't be lighting the layout or installing lights in the buildings or in the locomotives or signals or anything like that. Videos for another day. So if you are hoping to tune in and see some of that, you're definitely not gonna see that today. As always in this particular video, as mentioned in a previous one, today we're gonna to be talking about general lighting within the model railway room. So this indeed um, has to do with plugging into your electrical supply, albeit if it's 240 volts where I am, or perhaps you're 100, 110 or 100 or whatever in another country, I must make this disclaimer, and it's just common sense at the end of the day, any electrical work needs to be carried out by a qualified and licensed electrician. That's all we need to say about that at the moment. I've spoken about this in the previous videos, so let's just move on. If you've spent any time looking at some quality model railway magazines and lusted over those wonderful pictures that they have in them, you will know as well as me that to achieve some fantastic pictures, we get our camera, sometimes we'll get different lights or lamps or something to create some shadows and just get that perfect sort of image we want. That's fantastic. And when we go and see some of these wonderful uh, layouts on display or we see an exhibition layout or a permanent install at a museum or something, generally we will get to see some wonderful track lighting across the roof there where they can control where and what's being lit up and uh, what's being profiled and other things that it may not be. I love that stuff. And of course, as many of you know, in my other series of videos to do with Hi-Fi, I also am involved in the sound and lighting industry. So as a result, the more luminaries hanging up above our heads, the better. But in this case, it's just my little model railway and toy room. So we're gonna be practical and have a look at an approach that I've been up to. As you well know, in this particular room, I just have some reasonably standard LED panel lights in here. And as you can see, the room's well lit and we can all have a comfortable, cozy time. Of course, I have the lights on dimmers as well. So we can certainly just create a bit of atmosphere. As you can imagine, you're running a bit of a night scene on the layout and you just want to dim them down. Fantastic. That's what it's all about, of course. But as you well know, during these videos, we've still got quite some way before we have a ready to go layout where we can just turn the lights off and enjoy it. We've still got a lot of construction still to happen. So let's talk about this particular lighting. First of all, we need to kick off about the cabinet again. So one thing that was done during the construction of the cabinet work. Um, now I've seen a lot of other YouTube channels and people who are doing this who have a similar thing. They'll have the layout wrapping around a wall or something, and then they'll put some shelves um, up above to store things like their model uh, buildings or their locomotives or in my case toys or anything really why not otherwise it's a bit of a wasted space and we're not setting the layout up much higher and for an average ceiling height it is redundant space now that being said and i'm just going to digress really quickly here for a moment one of my pet peeves um, I cannot stand when we just see a 90 degree bracket come up. They'll put a few up here and they'll slap a piece of timber or melamine or whatever it is up here to get a shelf. Look, it works. I have no problems with that. And as you're going to see in a later video, even I had to succumb to that horrible arrangement because it's just the way it was going to work. In this room, because it's it's rather personal, intimate. You know, Like I've said, I've been at this for basically... Uh, 40 years of wanting to get to where we are now. So the whole point was to get it done right. So during the construction with the cabinet maker, um, I did have the LED strip lighting diffusers um, mount, routed into the cabinet work. So they've been there since day one, since we go back to the very first video about um, getting the cabinets in. Um, but I didn't have the LED lighting. Not so much at the time um, about it wasn't available. It's been around for a long time now. A lot of you have probably used it on various different applications. But what I was trying to achieve wasn't quite accessible. The good news is, in recent years, it has become accessible in the configuration that best suits my requirements. Of course, in the past couple of years, there have been some global challenges that have meant logistics have been quite challenging. So 
when I finally managed to raise the funds knowing that putting the sliding in wasn't going to be cheap, the next thing was once I put the order in, I was presented with the fact it could be three to six months. Well, Father Christmas has arrived early. And here we are. So, we've got the box of bits we've been waiting on. When I approached this particular challenge, I decided to get all the exact measurements of what we have, pop into my electrical wholesaler, and say to them, this is what I'm trying to do. I was then presented with a stack of thick, uh, glossy brochures from all the suppliers with options available. And in my case, I, I went with a company called Habit um, that had what I was chasing. The next thing is I was put in touch with their sales representative um, located in, uh, in the nearby capital city who then analyzed my conceptual design, so to speak, have a look at what they had available and then put together a solution that was going to work for me. Again, because one of the longest runs in this room is at some five plus meters, um, clearly the particular style of LED strip I was using wasn't going to cover that distance. Now, I can say that because I've got uh, a, 20, a few 20 meter reels of RGB, red, green, blue, LED strip lighting that we use on different things. Now 20 meters and you're saying to yourself there, so what's the problem? Well, it all comes down to the exact products I've chosen based on the particular application. So let's dive into this box and see what we have. Again, based on the fact that we had the exact specification, the manufacturer uh, has sent me the um, LED strip reels as required, also has marked of what location they need to be, and also has pre-cut them into the lengths that was required. Not that it's a big deal, but that's gonna become quite logical down the track. And they're marked for what we need. Now, I opened up one of these just for this, and we'll dive into this shortly. It's your typical sort of strip lighting LED. Um, you'll all be aware of it. Here are our little uh, contacts here, and uh, away we go. What's interesting is, uh, I didn't ask for this, uh, but what they did do is obviously looking at my diagram, they've pre-soldered uh, the tails onto this and heat shrunk it professionally for me. So as a result now, once I go to lay it all in, I'm literally just gonna come and terminate onto uh, the distribution block and away we go. So I thought that's a nice touch. We're gonna come to that shortly. So we've got our reels of lighting. Um, the next thing is we have our distribution block for all this to happen. And the next thing is we need a power adapter. We're gonna be using this 200 watt one coming in a box that's weighing at about eight kilos. This is some seriously solid stuff here. Um, to power it all. Again, you're thinking about this going, seems like a lot of power, seems like uh, a bit uh, over the top with the LEDs. We're getting there. And of course the final thing, and in this instance, the most important thing is a controller. Now, this is the particular wall controller that I've gone for. Now, the question would have to be, everyone's going to be saying, hang on a minute, well, all of these LED lights, usually you get a remote control or you can run it from your smartphone and all of those options are possible with this solution. My pet peeve is I don't need any more remote controls in my life. I think as been proven for the past, what, nearly 100 years it feels like, is that the traditional switch has done us very, very well. People walk into a room, into any country, reach around a door, and we know what we're looking for. And we're waiting for that tactile click, click of an on off. Whether it's wired to go down is on, which is generally the case where we are, and other countries where you flick it the other way to turn on, it doesn't matter. It's only gonna be a 50-50 to quickly figure out how it works. So I wanted this particular wall controller, which is capable of many great things, but more than anything, which is gonna be located just over here, somewhere like this, and we'll pop it into the wall, is that we've got this beautiful uh, brushed aluminium knob. We can't really go too wrong there, where we can uh, dim it and we'll come to the uh, changing the temperature and also the on off switch, which seems quite simple. So that's gonna be what we're going to use in this application. Again, it's not just a matter of creating atmosphere into the model railway room, which of course was the whole idea with LED strip lighting. Are we gonna go with warm white? Are we gonna go with cool white? Well, I like the warm white generally. It gives that bit of a glow of the daylight, so to speak, or a sunrise or a sunset. So I wanted to sort of keep with that theme. So in this situation, these LEDs are warm white and cool white, and I can respectively go between as needed. But the reason why, because I've just answered my own question saying, well, warm white sounds good. 
Yes, but as we're building it, sometimes there's a moment where we just need good overhead lighting based on what we're doing. And uh, you know we can flick it over to get that more sort of clinical, cleaner look with the cool white. So if you're looking for your blasted little pico screws that can very quickly disappear, it's a wonderful thing. So that's the whole idea with the approach I've taken here. The next thing we're gonna do in this video now is I thought we'll just unpack this on the floor um, and we'll do a bit of a rough sort of uh, wire it up to make sure everything's working and operating the way we need to do. And then we're gonna go along and install it. We're gonna sort of fast forward and time lapse some of this because there's really nothing too important here. We just all wanna see that end result of course, but let's see the approach I've taken to try and get us there. So you can see we've obviously got the tricky part done. The holes are in and up into the ceiling. There's a bit of jet line there to bring us uh, to do the pull through, which we're gonna do next. And of course, we've also just popped a hole in from the top where we're gonna aggregate the two feeds. Now, uh, we're using the Habit series of lighting here, which they've pre-loomed into these strips that I need. 3.95 meters on this side. On the longest side, we're going to have two strips of 2.5 five meters so we're going to have two and a half coming in this way that'll bring us to somewhere in the middle here and if we come down the other corner here's our other hole waiting to go and we'll pull our cable up and once again you'll see a nice hole coming up and through into the extrusion so we'll send the next strip back two and a half that way. And our last one, which is two something going in this direction. And that's pretty much where we're gonna end up. So that bit's done, we've tested it's all working. So as I said, everything there is there. Here's some of the strip actually here at the moment where you can see they've done a great job of pre-soldering all this up for me. I'm gonna need to make a bit of an extension. So that's not to worry, got a bit of extra cord here and we'll solder it up. We'll grab our pull through, get it all happening, and tidy it up. Should look good. Sorry for standing in the way of this camera. So as we start installing the LED stripping into the um, into our diffusion channel, we do want to press it in. Now, you don't have to put it in. People take this stuff and just stick it to whatever you like to do. Modifying a car and away you go, just stick it on. It's... You can get a lot of weatherproof stuff now. But the thing about using the aluminium channel is it also does act as a bit of a heat sink. So you've also got a position where they do generate some heat. Look, I'm 50-50 about this because um, even though there's not much weight in here, in time, what's going to happen is uh, gravity dictates that the lights may sort of droop down. So it's not gonna be perfect. Um, I think it's still too early to say. This has been a pretty tried and tested way for the past 10 years that people have been using LED strips. So it's not a bad thing. But most importantly, uh, it's the heat dissipation. Even if you're not pushing, if you were using red, green, blue LED arrangements and then you set it to white, which means they all have to run at 100%, um, there is heat. It may not be a lot. The whole point in this is it's a lot lower than using traditional uh, halogen uh, type fixtures, but there's still this heat. So I recommend in any application, if you're using this, to try and use some sort of, if, even if you're not actually needing to diffuse the light itself, um, just mounting onto something similar to this, which will at least dissipate some heat from it. The stuff is exceptionally sticky. I don't really see it going anywhere. So I will carry on. And you do wanna make sure when you're doing it, you're keeping it reasonably neat and straight because you will get issues down the track where if it's not, that diffuser is gonna be a whole bunch of problems getting it on. I can tell you that from experience. So here we are at the top of a cabinet here. This is the one on the right hand side. So our hole penetrates down here and into our LEDs. So and what I did just to finish this up, this is the neatest I can possibly make. Remember, this is above eye level, so you really don't even see this, even when there's stuff on the shelf. I just used, obviously, the um, plastic ducting at the moment, and it's okay. Um, but this was always going to be the problem, getting the tails up and into the ceiling and making this look good. Usually I use the Clipsal Series 2000 uh, stuff, but uh, I'd have to use a grommet that would stick out a fair way and would waste my shelf space. This is the neatest, tidiest way. Now, um, 
Uh, I've also plugged the hole at the top where it penetrates uh, through the beam. So there's no draft or anything coming through. It's the most elegant way I can make this look. Of course, this is a flexible type of stuff. I've had this in use actually. We've been using this stuff for many years now, 20 years I think or more. Um, and I've got installations where that still is exactly the way it was when I left it. Of course, there's the brush panel we can also put in as well, which I've used in other applications. But in this room, just trying to seal it as much as possible. And I think the brush panel is just not applicable because we're not constantly feeding and moving stuff in and out. So uh, again, I'm not big on the bibbles at the moment that come across with it, but it's, again, no one's even going to see this. Uh, this is the particular kit I'm using. It does come with the bullnose on it as well, which of course I've just thrown out. Um, it's neat, it's tidy, it suits the application, and I don't think that's too bad at all up here. Well, here we are. LEDs are now installed. And we're going to finally conclude our video. It's a long time coming because there are a lot of delays beyond my control, including the fact that I'm shooting the video now in the daytime. I'm in the middle of cutting the lawn and trimming hedges, so I'm a little bit of a mess. But this is the only moment where I can now use my big boomy voice and get the video out to you because there's no one sleeping in the house with our little one or anything like that. And uh, I just could never get the timing quite right. The project has been heavily delayed because of some challenges. I even had the representative um, from Habit, which is the lighting crew I've been using, drive all the way up from Sydney and personally see me on this one because we were just having some challenges where it wasn't quite operating the way it should have. So the good news is everything is absolutely perfect. As you can see, here are, here are the reels of cable that we've used. Here is all the, from the LED strip that we have and everything is good to go. Now what's this photo all about? I must take one moment to tell you about this. While I absolutely adore this wall controller, this has to be the most ridiculous mounting plate I have seen. Of course, if you are roughing in and pre-building a house and putting your uh, templates and C plates and mounting plates behind the jip rock before it's going in, knowing what's going to go on there, excellent for you. In my case, that didn't happen. And you can see how tightly where the screws are and how I'm anchoring to the wall here to hang on to it, gripping that jip rock by the absolute seat of my pants here. There's not much to go. I will confirm now I'm very happy and it's solid, but you can see they could have maybe have made the mounting plate option a little bit more generous with where they were going to secure it. But the good news is it's all turned out perfectly. So as we look at these photos now, you can see basically what's been achieved. We've laid it all out here on the floor, tested and everything worked magnificently. And then just a matter of taking it up into the cabinetry work and uh, making sure it's all been terminated, looking very sexy there. And jump up into the ceiling pretty much just above where the uh, light switch was. And we've just terminated everything up here. It's all been smooth sailing, very accessible. And there is also a 3D laser printed uh, wiring schematic that gets left up there in the ceiling. So in the future, anyone that needs to reference this or understand how it's been wired and done has the complete and utter mud map. I'm pretty particular about this everywhere I go. Is it necessarily? No. Would a typical electrician or someone come in and understand what's going on? Absolutely. I just think it's a nice little way to quickly troubleshoot any problems and save people in the future time. Look at the advancements we've made with dictionaries, encyclopedias, and things now like Google. The information is there for us to use, and people have spent their time documenting solutions to a range of problems. And the way into the future is to look back to the past. And if everything is in a nice chronological organized way, how can we go wrong? Okay, as mentioned, we're shooting this video in the middle of the day, but I think that's not a bad thing. We've got a little bit of natural light just shining in the background there, but it's enough to let us proceed. So first of all, let's just introduce a little bit of light into the situation here and talk about what's going on. Okay, so first of all, what we have in this room we have um, two LED lights on this half and two LED panels on this half of the room. So they're just our general room lights and each one has its own dimmer. So the one next to us is on this dimmer and we can dim that off. And on the other side, we have some that we can dim on. So that's nice and simple. So we've obviously got light. 
The next thing is we've introduced a wall controller. And you'll notice, so they're just standard light switches, nothing amazing there. But you'll notice on this one down the end here, I've marked it as LED strip. So while I still have my traditional lights in the way I'm you know, generally going to run them, when it's time that I may want to be using the LED strip, it's just a bypass that's come on. And the way the LED strip works, and what we'll do, we'll just dim this off for a minute. And let's reposition the camera so we can also see the strips in action as well, shall we? Now, I won't lie to you. This is a pretty compromising position. But as I said, we've obviously got our room light here. But let's dim it off completely. And let's talk about our LED strip. So we've obviously got the power on, so irrespective of where that dimmer is, if we just push the button, we have lights. Looks pretty good to me. So now we've got our LED strip. I apologize, I'll zoom out in a moment and you'll be able to see the rest of the room. But let's just have a quick chat about what's going on so you can see the LED lights with the switch in the best position I can possibly make available for you. And basically, we have this nice, we just push the knob, the lights go on, the lights go off. Nothing too interesting there. And of course it's a knob. So if we just turn the knob in one direction, we will, and if we'll be dimming the lights, and if we turn it the other way, we bring them up and make them a bit bright. Now, there's nothing really too interesting about that of course. And I guess the key thing is what I like about this particular knob is if, if we turn it all the way to the maximum, it will tell you it's at the maximum. Vice versa, if we keep turning down to the minimum, which should basically be almost off, but it still is on, um, we can't dim any more than that. So it's telling us that. Okay, let's just bring the lights back up again. So the other thing is if we just hold down for a couple of seconds, you'll hear the chime go. This is where we can now turn the light to be of a cool white. And there we go, we're all the way at cool white. And indeed, if we were to turn it in the other direction, of course, you can see we start to introduce, we're getting that Kelvin uh, rating just a little bit lower now. And we're starting to introduce, there we go, a nice warm white, or, you know, effectively it's almost a yellow. And we'll turn the lights off, beautiful. And as you can see, that natural light coming into the room at the moment. So. Let's turn the lights on, here we go. And by default, it's wherever you left it. In this case, I left it on color. So if we spin the knob around, you should see things to start lightening up now. And it's amazing how quickly the room temperature seems to feel like it's changing as we do go from cool to warm. Um, vice versa, let's just turn it back down there roughly into the middle. And if we hold our finger down once more, and now we enter our dimming mode where we can obviously dim that down to the appropriate level of what we want. So let's actually dim it right down now. Oh, romantic, isn't it? And we're gonna hold the button down again. And this time let's swap it down and just quickly there on the low light, there we go, at the warmest white we're going to see. And quickly there we'll turn it around to the nice cool white. Let's conclude the video, shall we? Well. Am I happy with what we've achieved? Absolutely. Did it take far too long to get all this done? Yes. There's nothing we can do about it. That's just where we're at. I'm still waiting on my replacement point motors to arrive. And uh, I know they've already said that was on back order and they were still expecting something not until September. Goodness knows where we're going to go with this video, but not to stress too much because I can tell you the next step is we are dropping part of the baseboard down in a video. Finally talk to you a little bit about that wonderful stuff called baking paper. And we've got to uh, get that uh, curved viaduct. We're gonna get the base paint uh, down on that. I like to just recap about the video. I'm pretty particular and I'm very happy with the way it has turned out. As I said at the beginning, one of the other key reasons why it's there and is starting to prove very useful as I'm cutting away into that corner there as I'm gonna drop a section of the baseboard has got to be that the light is right there above me like any good workbench light. Um, I mean, in most situations, you go into a room and there's a light in the center of the room and then you're trying to do something working on a desk that's in the corner and without a desk lamp or something, your body is naturally creating a shadow with, because the light is behind you. So having the strip running all across, whether I use it or not, the key reason why it's there isn't just about running the, the 
model railway turning it on and having it well illuminated because I think at the end of the day it's um there's only a brief moment in the day when the sun is directly up the sky in the summertime in the middle most of the time it's tracking on its uh, appropriate path and we're creating shadows and things like that and that's a little bit more interesting for me however when it comes to working on the layout and we're, we're putting in the wiring we're laying things down and we need to see it and this is going to become really big when we start doing the um, laying the scenery down nothing quite beats really good lighting and I don't have to go around with a headlamp on my um, strap to my head or with lamps and other things I could just turn a switch on and we have adequate lighting the other great thing is I'm absolutely wrapped in the selection of controller that was made available for me, this particular wall controller. It looks neat, it looks tidy, it's simple, it's easy to operate, and I couldn't be happier. So it's something to think about when you are building your model uh, railway, when we see exhibition layouts and that, we see various types of track lighting up there. But if you're going to go ahead and um, commit to having a room or something like that, and you're putting some shelves and bits and pieces out, well, while you're up there, spend an extra moment thinking about putting some lighting in. If for no other reason than it's just for your benefit when you're actually coming and modeling along saying, isn't it nice to have some light? And I think anyone that's done this will truly agree. So thanks for watching the video. We'll be seeing you in the next one. Thanks so much for your patience. Stay safe. I've got to get back to cutting that lawn. Toodles.